Welcome everyone to this episode of Palmetto Guardian. Today we will be talking about cyber awareness. Welcome everyone, I'm Sergeant Chelsea Baker. And I'm Specialist David Erskine. <laughs> That's so awesome. I know. We got new toys. Yes, as you, if you're watching, you can probably tell that uh, we have a lot more on our table. And if you're listening, you're probably like, why does that sound so crystal clear? Yeah. Um, I guess the first thing is, you know, a big thank you to everybody out there that kind of went through the process with us so we could, you know, get better podcasting equipment. Um, the... J6, G6, uh, um, uh, Chief Warrant Officer for Douglas, uh, Mr. Sellers over there, Lieutenant Colonel Brown, um, Chief of Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Taylor helped us out, uh, DOL, um, Major Marlowe over there, uh, Sergeant Parsons. There's, I mean, there was more A people than that. Yeah, there's, there's more <laughs> than that. I just I can't, I can't remember everybody off the cuff, but anybody that was involved in the process – of uh of us being able to get new podcast equipment basically um thank you um i think it's going to improve hopefully the quality of the podcast i think it has so far and we haven't even posted yeah. one yet with all of the new equipment i mean <laughs> i mean i got buttons and stuff and uh which is uh, you know uh, which is just awesome um so yeah the, we got an actual soundboard and things like that that we can you know, make some stuff in on and obviously better quality mics and stands. And then hopefully I'm not going to spoil it yet, but hopefully in the next month or two, we'll have a new addition to the, to the podcast also equipment wise, but yeah, uh, I'm excited we, about that. We got some folks helping us out on that mm-hmm. and, and we'll say thank you to them w- once <laughs> we get it. We don't want to premature thank you them. They might be like, Oh, they thanked us. We're good. We don't have to <laughs> we do it. We'll thank on delivery. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we're in October. We're we're, we're chugging through podcast. Uh, if, if you haven't noticed, we're up to doing two a week. I know it's crazy to think like what three four months ago to if you would have told me that in a couple months we would be pumping out podcasts as much as we are because this started out as not being a weekly thing. It started out as probably monthly and after the first podcast it kind of just took off and it's kind of consumed our lives in a sense but I think it's a good thing and we've got a lot of good information out for everybody so yeah and uh, I mean and, and really what it's been is has been everybody's interest in it from leadership to mm-hmm. uh, the soldiers and airmen listening to it and family members and stuff and feedback we've gotten and people wanting to get their message out um, a lot of people seem to like this format mm-hmm. it's a it's a lot more casual um, I think it's a lot more approachable mm-hmm. for, you know, everyday soldiers. It's something that can go up on YouTube and iTunes. So M day soldiers don't really have an issue getting to it per se, like something put up on the, the internal stuff like skip page and GKO mm-hmm. or whatnot. So, um, like I said, freshly in October here and you just got back recently. Yes. Ish. Ish. I know it's. I've been back for a couple weeks, but we haven't actually sat down and shot a podcast together since I've been back. So this, this is our first since you've exactly. been back. Exactly. Um, and for y'all that might not have noticed in a previous podcast, she is a sergeant now. Uh, she got promoted while overseas. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I got a button for that. <laughs> there we go. Or maybe maybe that <laughs> one's more appropriate. Um, listen, I apologize. I got, I got sound effects. You'll probably hear them. In Throughout the whole, <laughs> I'm gonna go through the whole thing so you can see what's on the board. I'm gonna find a reason for something all the way through, but uh, yeah, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, she was tough to live with before on a day to day basis, working now, she's just unbearable. Oh my gosh, uh, don't let him fool you. Um, but uh, anyway, it, good trip you did. Yeah, it was a good trip, good experience. Um, Definitely different than what I expected, but I still learned a lot. Would love to go back, um, learn something new possibly. Uh, met a lot of good people that I probably would have never met if I didn't go. So definitely made some new connections um, from not just our state, but other states. Um, so it was definitely a good trip, and I'm glad that I was able to go. 
And then a lot of things changed while you were gone in, oh just, my a, gosh. in just a short month, right? I know. I come back and I feel like all heck broke loose. Oh, it did. I mean, we got <laughs> we got super busy. Yes. Um, I mean, we're shooting podcast content pretty much every day or editing every day. Uh, picked up a new soldier mm-hmm. in the studio um, that you're mentoring. <laughs> Showing the ropes. <laughs> Showing the ropes. Um, so you came back and put on sergeant and... Got your first year. Here's your soldier. Yep. Um, of course, technicians or whatnot, but still, you know, she's she's teaching him what she knows. So we should be done with that in about what another week ish or so. I mean, I think we'll be done with it by today. By today, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. good at pumping out information. Pumping out information, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but no, nah, no, nah, he's uh, he's doing really well, and he he'll be on some of the podcasts and stuff mm-hmm. uh, as we as we move forward. Um, but with October is is Cyber Awareness Month. Yep. And um, actually, that's who we'll have on the podcast here in just a little bit. Somebody from our cyber section here in South Carolina. Um, but cyber is one of those things that's everywhere now. Yes. Technology is everywhere, and it's constantly changing. Yes. We talk about it all the time with our job. <laughs> like podcast technology. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because it's heavenly. It I really wish is. I wish that everybody could have been in the studio when we got this equipment <laughs> because it was it was like Christmas morning times ten for us. Oh yeah, I can't even describe how like we were so giddy, and I think that uh, this isn't this isn't <laughs> gonna be the first time that we yeah, we get all giddy about it. Um, yeah, I, I pushed that first button and and it made a sound effect, and I was like, yeah, we made it. <laughs> We're legit. We're on top. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, back back to the, the cyber stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it, cyber awareness is, is huge. Um, it, it touches, you know, people say cyber, they immediately think like hackers and yeah. all the super secret ninja stuff, which, you know, some of it is. Um, but, you know, cyber kind of encompasses everything. Cyber happens at home mm-hmm. uh, when we log on the computers. Um our kids get on the computers. There's a whole, because I, I dabble a little bit, and, you know, I've, I've studied and played around with some of the computer science area stuff. Um, but, I mean, you enter a whole different world, mm-hmm. and, and there are things you need to know when you're out there. It's not just a, a free street, you know. People sometimes may be a little too comfortable on it yeah if you hear banging and stuff in the background they're working downstairs in the museum <laughs> it's just the way our job does yeah i know the show must go on exactly um so you know once we get to talk to him uh, he'll i'm sure he'll have some some cool and interesting ideas for us to to look at for for cyber and and hopefully it educates people a little bit makes them a little bit more aware mm-hmm. about what's going on out there and what they can do to um, protect themselves and, and protect your kids yeah. Um, listen, I, I if you're somebody who's got kids, they're they're way better at this stuff than we are. They're way faster. They come out knowing how to use computer and cell phones and everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't got to teach them anything. They already know. My twelve year old, I have to go in there and be like, "Good Lord, where you at, man? Like you, you're finding the end of the internet. Stop. <laughs> breathe. Relax. Um, it's just going to be a sign at the end that says the end. That's how you know you've made it. Um. <laughs> But yeah, it it's it's something you need to be aware of. It's a reality of our world, um, and and for us in the military, I guess fortunately, unfortunately, it just depends on your perspective. It's become a battlefield area for us, mm-hmm. legitimately, um, and it's it's a it's a very serious conversation where it can compromise the whole United States, the the family members. I mean, th- this is this is a, a war area where family can be involved when it without having a choice. Uh, sitting in their home mm-hmm. um, so yeah uh, hopefully after he talks it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on and maybe take a few more precautions to protect yourself in the cyber world so today we have first sergeant rick chapman the first sergeant for the 135th uh, cyber security company so welcome for or thank you for being here today thank you team appreciate you having me yeah so could you explain exactly what cyber is Sure. Cyber is everything. Uh, cyber exists all around us. It's all the ones and zeros that we see. It's the interconnections of all uh, computers, computer networks and systems and services. Arguably, there's a, um, 
virtual reality uh, in some definitions are broken into uh, cyber as well. So it is the makeup of how our industry works, um, how our workforce is laid out. Uh, it's all of our pay systems. It's everything that affects us as a society today uh, can be construed to make up cyber. Um, so how does that break up work for us in the South Carolina National Guard? Because you guys are still a new unit in a sense and could you explain a little bit of the breakdown of the battalion and the companies and all that absolutely good question so uh in south carolina the 125th cyber protection battalion is relatively new we're less than two years old um, we just recently came back from a mobilization to fort Meade, maryland um, as we were flagging for a unit we also were deploying so kind of building the plane in flight as we go uh, in the National Guard construct for the nation, the 91st Cyber Brigade was stood up two and a half years ago uh, and encompasses right now four battalions. Those four battalions are around the nation. Uh, we expect a fifth battalion at some point to be named as well. Uh, for South Carolina, the 125th uh, is comprised of the headquarters, 125th. It has the 135th Cyber Security Company, the 145th Cyber Warfare Company, and we have two cyber protection teams that are made up of other states uh, within the country. We have the 172nd uh, Cyber Protection Team, which uh, is comprised of Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana. Then we have the 173rd Cyber Protection Team, which is comprised by New York and New Jersey. Uh, some of those units uh, deployed with us when we were in Maryland as well. Um, so, for a lot of people, the, the cyber concept is fairly new to the military and still, I, I guess, a growing sector in the civilian market too, especially as far as security goes. Mm. Um, you see in the, in the schools, I guess, universities and colleges and things like that, there's all kinds, of, everybody's starting some type of cyber security degree and things like that. Are, do y'all's, uh, I guess, roles kind of fall in line similar to what we're seeing the growth pattern in the civilian market for cybersecurity? Absolutely. Uh, everything that we do from your advanced individual training to your skills building, professional development and growth that we, we use in the Guard to make our cyber warriors uh, better, all articulate to a lot of these programs. Here in South Carolina, the Citadel has stepped up and made a tremendous push for a cybersecurity program. Uh, our technical college systems in South Carolina have stepped up and created cyber programs, and there are articulation agreements uh, between what we do in uh, AIT, uh, Advanced Leader course, as well as your Senior Leader courses, and of course your Officer Branch courses as well, that will translate directly to credits earned for uh, those degree plans. Now, um, we, we've obviously had, I guess, the signal part, the 25 series, as far as like Bravos and, mm -hmm. and those folks, our, our hardworking IT folks. Um, and some people might, when they hear cyber, might think that y'all fall kind of in line with that, that same career field, but y'all are a whole different monster. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so where do y'all actually? What are y'all? I, I guess the jobs that actually make up the the cybersecurity career field. Excellent. Uh, so we do spawn from, and we're fed by Signal. Uh, that is our um, our foundation, uh, because obviously you wouldn't have cyber without IT, without the infrastructure. That's that's the truth. But also intelligence uh, feeds that beast as well. Uh, we've uh, done really well with integrating not just the IT part, but also those 35 series Intel analysts into our cyber programs to make that entire operation much more enriched. So in, in the case of cyber, it is a different discipline. So we have a, a different focus in cybersecurity than we do in just making uh, networks work or fixing computers or ensuring availability of, say, your services that you're looking for. Here, uh, we're hunting. Uh, we're doing defensive cyber operations where we're protecting those networks. Uh, in some cases, we're doing red teaming or pen testing, which will test for vulnerabilities and see where weaknesses are in those networks, which is a little different than just making sure that uh, system or service is available. Um, now, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, younger generations have obviously grown up with, with the internet and cyber and, and that, that whole world around them. Um, for young soldiers that might have not realized that, you know, this world existed in the military um, or people who are looking to come in, what, uh, tell us a little bit about the process of how to get involved with the, the cyber community. Oh, excellent. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. If you're already in the military, it's, it's fairly easy. Uh, if you're in the South Carolina National Guard, reach out to your readiness NCO, reach out to your commander, and just let them know you're interested. 
there might be opportunities, if nothing else, uh, maybe a job shadowing. Maybe there's an opportunity to come to one of our drill weekends and see what we do and how we train. Um, we're building a bench of like-minded professionals that want to defend America in this way. So those are opportunities that you can do from within. If you're outside of the military and you're watching this and you say, I want to do cyber in the, in the military, I think the guard's the way to go, uh, reach out to your recruiter. Uh, we have some very sharp recruiters that are very well read into our cyber programs and have been supporting us from the beginning. So they will be able to answer those questions. And if not, they can reach out to us direct and we will get those that information to that individual as needed. Now, what are some qualifications to be able to become part of cyber as far as the ASVAB and that kind of stuff? Like what do what's required in order to come over to cyber? Uh, sure. So, uh, you know, as as we are soldiers, we have to soldier first. Uh, you do have to have certain requirements. I think the, one of the line scores for ST is 110. You have to have that in order to be considered for cyber. But there's always waivers. There's always uh, a second chance. You can take that ASVAB over again if you need to, to try to get those scores up. We really enjoy that entry level uh, applicant or soldier to come into this and let us train them the way we need them trained. Uh, we provide all kinds of opportunities, whether it's industry, academia, uh, special skills training. We use a lot of funding to go out to industry and build exactly the way a private company would build their uh, cybersecurity team. Uh, and we grow that internally and then apply it to the defense of America, defense of our community and state uh, as we need. So uh, I would not shortchange anyone that had that passion, drive, and motivation that wants to come in and be a part of this team. Let's see you. Let's get that resume out there. Let's find out what makes you tick, and then we will help you along the way. Um, you kind of mentioned a deployment up to uh, the Fort Meade area and things like that. Um, you know, a lot of times, I guess, uh, we relate AT and our deployments with like overseas stuff and, mm. and things like that. Once again, y'all are, y'all are a little bit different beast, but for people who, who don't know, and of course, I mean, you can talk, I guess, a little bit about it, can't delve into mm. the nuts and bolts of it, but, you know, kind of, I guess, where does that part of your mission set lie when, when the Title 10 folks do need you to come mm. around? You know, what, what typically are y'all getting involved in? Absolutely. Uh, traditionally, in our Title 32 role, we specifically uh, uh, support defensive cyber operations. So we're looking for, we're hunting, we're trying to figure out how the bad guy's getting in, how do we prevent that through mitigation techniques. Title 10 mission is really up to whatever that mission commander needs. That could be doing vulnerability assessments, that could be running infrastructure, we could be managing operations, we could be conducting operations from various ways, you know. Um, insert any sci-fi movie that, uh, <laughs> that you want here. Uh, but this black, is black hat, black hat. Absolutely. Chris we can do that. Uh, Script kitties. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we do a plethora of things uh, that whatever the mission calls for. And what's significant about that is we have to train to those standards. So in order to be able to conduct those types of operations, regardless of what color that might be, we have to be ready. And what is the motto of the guard? Right. Always ready. Right. So this is one of those great things that uh, in our industry, as we're evolving and as we're taking the skill to the next level, we're becoming a huge national resource uh, for our Title 10 authorities, but also for our state and nation authorities, uh, DHS. Uh, we follow a lot of their guidelines and we support them as well. Our local law enforcement, we have to integrate with them. Our critical infrastructure in South Carolina, we have to integrate with them as partners to make sure that we can support and defend them when needed. Uh, if we're called to task on something that happens in America, we need to be prepared to do that. Uh, and that's what our training is all about. Um, now you meant, and you mentioned kind of our state type things. And uh, a lot of the guests we've had on lately, we've, we've referred back to our, our hurricanes and, mm. and all the natural disasters because South Carolina's had a huge X on it for the last, what, five years ish. Right, right. Um, what type of mission do y'all have? Because uh, me personally, and this is just my thoughts, is opinion, I, I wouldn't see y'all being very, uh, I guess, integrated in like a natural disaster. Mm. Am I incorrect in that that thought process? Absolutely, okay. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So here here's the adage we say: um, when the focus is on the threat, which could be hurricane, tornado, uh, earthquake, fire, whatever that might be, who's watching City Hall? Right? Who is is looking at our infrastructure to make sure the bad guy isn't taking advantage of that dark day in our community where we're trying to respond to saving lives and property? Well, networks and cybersecurity, this is global. So people around the world are looking at this, and that's a prime opportunity for an adversary to try to take advantage of, of South Carolina during one of those events. So we have teams. We have the, the defensive.
cyber operations element that's ran out of the J6 that supports a lot of that uh, through the um, fusion cell uh, in the state. They work with the EOCs. They're uh, integrated into the uh, Joint Operations Center, and they have directives uh, from the JOC on how they're going to respond. We also can deploy to uh, counties and support counties as necessary to be, you know, point of need, real time support to uh, what are we seeing on those networks? Are there um, abnormalities? Are we seeing things that we didn't see before, but because their manning is so under strength because they're fighting this other event, maybe we can help in surge protection. Uh, we do a lot of train assist advise with our partners. So yes, sir, we're absolutely uh, an asset to the state under our defense support and civilian authority, uh, the governor's office to protect critical infrastructure, but also all the way down to those counties that say, hey, I need help. I can't manage this on my own. We're there to support. Okay, so you proved me wrong. <laughs> no, no arguing that. Mm -hmm. um, now, you mentioned uh, cybersecurity being a, a global thing, and I'm, I'm going to take advantage of, of having you here um, to ask this question because this isn't directly related, I guess, to the military. This is more of a, a, a civilian type thing or, or for our, our soldiers and airmen or whatever. Um, not everybody knows cybersecurity, mm -hmm. and obviously it still affects us at home if we have, obviously, any type of network or computer. Mm -hmm. um, what are some just, I guess, maybe tidbit, like good good practices? You know, nothing too complicated. Don't want to get in and start writing scripts or programs or, you know, ping testing anything like that. But just some, just some you know, some basic things that we can do at home to kind of make ourselves a little bit more secure in the cyber world. Absolutely. Excellent question. Thank you for asking that. That, that to me, is near and dear to my heart. Uh, we recently supported a infraguard led uh, cyber camp at uh, Aiken County, the North Augusta High School, where we were teaching high school kids how to defend themselves. Uh, one day we brought the parents in and taught them how to defend themselves, and this came up. So one of the things that uh, we do is geotagging, geotagging, can you see me? Geotagging <laughs> is, is critical uh, for us as parents or, or as responsible adults to understand what's going on there. Our kids are clicking everything, they're downloading everything, they're sharing their entire lives, our lives as well, <laughs> on uh, social media. Well, when they submit uh, pictures, uh, not all applications will strip out the geolocation data, the lat long, of where that picture was taken. And it's very trivial to take those pictures and throw them on, say, Google Maps and find out where you've been, and if I can understand that you go there a lot, you're probably going back again, which would make them a target. So this is huge for our kids. Uh, another thing is, you know, we blow through these EULAs and we don't read uh, the end user license agreement. We don't read what that uh, application is, is using your data for. So if you've ever heard, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Absolutely true. If you didn't pay for it, how are they making money? Well, they're making money on you. They're selling your likeness. They're selling your data, your usage history. Maybe they're uh, scanning your network while you're at home and trying to find out other goody ways to, to do things. To me, that is one of our biggest risks. That's one of the biggest threats to our kids. And as all these apps keep popping up and they keep changing, uh, they're all doing the same thing. So we try to teach everybody that'll listen, here's how to turn off geolocation. Here's how to ensure that that data is stripped out of those pictures that you're posting. Uh, and if parents are interested, you know, they're, uh, the state law enforcement division, SLED, has a great website on how do you protect yourself. Uh, Department of Homeland Security has some great websites that are very easy and user friendly to read on basic protections. Uh, second to that is privacy. Please look at your privacy settings. Whenever you install an application or you get a new phone, everything is wide open. And if you don't go and check that box to turn things off, you're freely giving away your information. We have to stop that, and we have to stop that here. Uh, and most importantly, teach our kids the importance, not just how, but why. Why do you need to do this, and what risk are you taking upon yourself, and you should be taking upon the family, uh, when you don't do those base pra uh, baseline practices? Yeah, that's, um, you know, I always say the phone's listening, because I swear I can be talking about something like a Chevrolet car or something, and then the next time I open my phone, there's some kind of ad that pops up. <laughs> yes. I'm like, yes. ah, this is just this is just too much. Um, but um, you mentioned. Um, I knew where I was going with that before I started. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have went for the Chevrolet comment. I had something. There was something he said, and I was like, dang, I owned in on it. Now, now I kind of went to the ether on it a little bit. Um, uh, 
it was something related to the communities. I know that's what it was. I'm actually going that route now, so let me see if okay, I can spark well, your yeah, interest. Go ahead. Maybe you have the answer already. So interestingly in cyber, uh, because we are global, because we are everywhere, it takes a community to really manage and build and support what it takes, one, to get there to be able to, to be that cyber warrior to defend. But also we have to have partners. Uh, our, the great power of the Guard is that our soldiers are in the community. They live and work in these communities. And in our battalion makeup, for example, uh, the majority of our soldiers actually live and work in critical infrastructure or in IT or cybersecurity in some fashion. So the skills they bring back to us are critical. There's no way in the world the Department of the Army could pay for 20 years worth of experience to bring you in and help you defend America. It doesn't work that way. So we rely on that, and so does the nation. It relies on our individual uniqueness in our own skill fields and career fields to bring that, uh, that back to the fight. So in our community, we reach out through academia, through other partnerships. Our own state guard has been a phenomenal resource to help train us, train with us, exercise with us, and defend America. These guys have incredible skills that they're willing to freely give out to ensure that we are all collectively trained properly so that we can go out and defend our community state nation. Uh, so inside that, we have critical infrastructure partners, government partners, people that are in the same space as us that have resources that we can use. We have uh, champions out there uh, that will allow, because they're uh, patriotic Americans, they want to freely give over what they know to ensure that our soldiers have the best tools, they have the best um, training platforms, that we can take it to the enemy uh, with the most common uh, modern-day uh, advances. Uh, it is such an incredible experience to be on the this side of, of, of evil, right? We're the good guys. We're the, the ones defending America and know that we have partners out there and we're not alone. So that has been an exciting um, experiment. It's been an exciting realization for me as I've traveled the country trying to deal with cyber and figure out what it is and how do we, how do we use it. Uh, I'm very appreciative and, and I'm proud uh, of where we are as Americans. You, you mentioned a couple times defending America and, and, and I guess being defenders. Um, and the and the the cyber community. This is kind of uh, I don't want to call it a new battlefield, but it, it kind of is a new battlefield. Hmm. Um, and 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 over the years, there's been uh, I guess people maybe not always realize, but there's been multiple attacks on the United States and right. and, and named attacks, um, prolonged uh, I guess siphoning of information and mm -hmm. things like that. But really. For all intents and purposes, this being a new battlefront, what, what's that like? And, and have, I guess some of the younger soldiers that you've seen come into this, how are they, do they understand the magnitude of really where they're at? I mean, when we, all, we always talk tip of the spear mm -hmm. in the military, but legitimately this is tip of the cyber spear type thing. Absolutely. Uh, I honestly don't think they understand their impact. They don't understand where they are. Uh, we are relying on our young people who have grown up in technology to understand, to comprehend, and communicate what's going on. This is one of those domains of warfare where it's, it's upside down. It's not led from the top down. It's really led from the grassroots, those individuals that have raised up in this. They, they get it. They understand what's going on. We owe them what is the threat. How do they fit in this big bottle of, of, uh, of messiness that nobody really understands? Uh, but we're learning so much more from them because in my generation, we didn't have cell phones when I grew up. I didn't have Xbox and PlayStation. You know, nothing was interconnected like it is now. So to have lived through that from the beginning, uh, there's a wealth of knowledge and experience that we're trying to replicate as fast as possible. Given, of course, our kids are our greatest threat vector because they do <laughs> click everything. There's a balance, right. right? So the training, a lot of that has to deal with uh, responsibility, maturity, and accountability that's appropriate at that level. Uh, but as far as ideas or understanding uh, how we use technology in a way today, uh, those young people are vital to the defense of America. We, we couldn't do it without them. And that's super cool because it's, it's – and I think it's interesting from my point of view just because you've seen this whole creation of something that just wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. And there's very few times uh, – you don't always get to see that in your lifetime. Right. You know? uh, and, and we got to saw it. I mean, I, I kind of think of it similar to, you know, when the, the Army Air Force left the, the Army and became mm. the Air Force. Like, I consider the, this cyber initiative kind of the same level, you know, of, of, of impact, I guess, as far as how the military does business from this point further. Um, 
And speaking of from this point further, look at that. It's amazing transition. <laughs> um, um, what do you see for the cyber community as as it grows and, and in the in the future here? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> what a loaded question. Uh, so as I see trends, I read reports. Uh, I look at every metric that uh, these uh, civilian agencies or government agencies are putting out. You know, one big one that stands out is Deloitte published recently that we're going to be 3 million uh, jobs short of cyber professionals by 2025. That's a big number. Uh, and, and that is relative to, you know, what is the workforce looking for? Well, how do we bridge that gap? If we don't have enough people uh, investing in, say, STEM programs from high school to college, graduating college, and then taking that information, that knowledge, and applying that to the defense of America, you know, we're already upside down in that. So one of the things is outreach, and we have to get better at uh, engaging our community, uh, working with our academic partners to grow this discipline uh, in a meaningful way in our communities. Uh, you know, South Carolina is largely known for agriculture and manufacturing. It's not necessarily a technology hub like Silicon Valley or some of those others. Uh, we need to change that. Uh, with uh, the growth at Fort Gordon and the Cyber Center of Excellence, you have this incredible uh, dynamic that's happening in the Southeast that I don't think has happened since uh, the Industrial Revolution. Uh, so with that, we're growing so many new uh, jobs, we can't keep up with them. So what does that mean to me? Well, we, in some cases, can decide how many zeros are behind our paycheck because we're in that great a need. Um, the future, in my mind, we have to empower our young people to understand their place, like we talked about, understand what their value is and how they can apply that. But also we have to keep engaging with our government partners so that we can see the threat. We need to have the data and information sharing and collaboration is killer. We have to do that. And that is one of those kind of things. We're getting better. We're getting a lot better at it right now. But it was almost unheard of in the government agencies because people wanted to close hold things. Um, I'm not old enough to, to really say why or how or all those things. But I would say that in my experience, uh, where I'm at in the position I'm in now, where I've been in, in my life over the last eight years working cyber for South Carolina, and of course coming off of a mob with Fort Meade, Maryland, seeing the defense of America at the national level, it's getting a lot better. Uh, we have some great champions in our state that are willing to step up and, and take some heat rounds for making those things work. We've got a lot of partners that are opening the, that eye, that, that lens, so that we are fed more information, and it is getting better. Uh, I look forward to that in the future, and I hope that as we grow, uh, we can take all of that, wrap it around a program, and put that on the plate of these young people coming into the service. That's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> it's a busy time. It's busy, busy time. Busy time. <laughs> so if you're a go-getter, you like to work, we got the career field for you. It's a lot of, and say growth, um, I guess another part of it, and this is, this is kind of switching gears, I mean, a little bit more recruiting, but y'all obviously have an amazing uh, warrant officer cohort uh, there uh, involved in that. And they're, they're a whole different, uh, I won't call them a beast, but a genre all to themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us a little bit, because I've known a couple of the folks that switched over and went uh, to y'all's side on, on the cyber with the warrant officer stuff. You mind right. talking about the the warrant officer group with y'all? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I, I will tell you, I have never been more impressed than to see how the Army has grown our warrant officers. This uh, 170 Alpha program that they have for cyber warrant is incredible. It's challenging. It's hard. Uh, our guys uh, grow up in Signal. Uh, they have traditional... Um, signal warrant positions uh, within the signal brigade or supporting, say, another MSC. Uh, but when they come to cyber, they have to learn new skills. But their their level of passion, drive, and motivation is exceptional. So what we've done is uh, we've wrapped programs around that and largely led by them. They have helped create these things to where they are taking the lead in training our young people. And I can tell you from an NCO perspective, that is incredible. We need it. Uh, they've invested so much money and resources in these warrants to be the expert. I mean, consummate professional who understands this domain and can operate. Uh, bringing that skill to our training events, to our young people, getting our, our force uh, prepared for whatever dark day in America that may come, they've been exceptional, and, and I am so privileged to work with them. Um, now... Part of, I guess, I guess part of this, and, and I'm, I'm kind of staying, I guess, a little bit in the recruiting realm for, for folks on this. But for somebody who, on the fence, may be interested, you know, they, they know a little bit about cyber and whatever else. Um, obviously, drill weekends are always a thing, you know, for people in the garden. Mm -hmm. You know, what am I doing on drill weekend? Am I just going and hanging out in armor? Am I doing something cool? What's some of the just, you know, month-to-month -month training type stuff that y'all have going on? 
Absolutely. Uh, I tell you, uh, I am very fortunate to work with some of the greatest people, the brains, these uh, initiative-driven folks that really will not at drill hold up the wall. They want to go work. They do not want to do PMCS all day long. They are going to go to work. And one of the things we did this past weekend, we just had drill, uh, we're building out ranges, uh, cyber ranges, so that our guys can do force on force, uh, blue team, red team events. Uh, we are cannibalizing whatever we can cannibalize to get the resources that we need to train with. Everything is a training opportunity. Uh, we're delivering classes. Uh, a lot of our guys, uh, myself included, we get opportunities to go and get uh, industry certifications. Well, when we get those industry certifications, that's not just for us. We bring that back and we teach our soldiers what we learned. When we travel around the country doing TDYs or we do exercise support or we're participating in exercises, we take that knowledge and bring it back. Um, our guys are really good at, I saw this thing, you need to know about it, and just create hip pocket training. So many times we've just, in, on the fly, stood up a 30-minute presentation. We don't have all the bells and whistles. We don't have to stand up PowerPoints and all that mess. No, we just sit down and tell you the facts. Here's what you need to know. Here's how you defend it. Let's go train. And we do it. Uh, our guys are very creative when it comes to these things uh, because they work in this industry. A lot of our guys have resources on the outside they bring in. Uh, we partner with our state guard who has tremendous talent out in the community. They come in and give us that kind of training. Everyone that I know in this space has some widget on their desk at home or in a box somewhere that they bring to drill, and we train on it. It could be 20 years old technology, but we're training on it. You know, and, and it's exciting because we get to see things from that 360 view it's not just relegated to what Army says you must know. We really own this fight, and I think the National Guard has such a prominent space here that we can't be matched when it comes to these skills. Our soldiers live this every day, and we can't pay for it. They, they bring it for free, and that's, that's what we love. So the creativity, the ingenuity, uh, and the fact that uh, it, in cyber, is since it's everything, we can train on anything. It works. Uh, you will not be bored in the 125th Cyber Protection Battalion. You will not. <laughs> they, uh, and you, you talk about people bringing their, their widgets and stuff from the house or whatever. And um, you do have people, uh, cyber security is obviously a, a very broad field right. when you actually start looking at it. But you do have people that drill down and specialize in the certain areas. Uh, reverse programming, mm -hmm. uh, cyber attack, there's the hardcore defenders, there's might be people who work more on, you know, packet watching and things like mm -hmm. that. Do you see that translate over into the, the, the guard unit as well? Absolutely, every single day. Um, what's great about that is, is you hit it right on the head. Uh, that's true. We have soldiers that in the community, they work for their corporations or their businesses doing that very thing, and they're experts in this. So maybe they have this niche field where they're really good at it because this is what they do. Intrusion detection, for example, where you're looking for packets on the wire and just trying to see what communication is going on between all these things. That skill is hard to get. You, you have to train on that. You have to live that. We have people that do that. Reverse engineering, you're talking about that. Uh, we have guys that deal with malware reverse engineering in their jobs day to day. So they're familiar with the tools and the techniques and the procedures that are necessary to do that. And they bring it home. They come and teach our guys how to do this. Uh, we have network engineers that have the highest level certifications in this field that bring that knowledge back. Their companies may have paid for that. And, and their experiences, however many years they're in it, are applied to our training. You can't beat that powerhouse team that can come together from an industry and academic perspective and defend America. That is an invaluable resource, and we, we definitely take advantage of that every day. Now, you mentioned certifications a couple times, and for mm -hmm. people who don't know, IT, uh, cyber world, runs off of certifications. Yes, sir, absolutely. So you can have a degree, and that's great, and mm -hmm. that's good. It's a good foundation for education. Bottom line is, is when you go in, they're looking to see what search you have. Mm -hmm. You CCNA, your CEA, CEA certified ethical hacker, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cyber defender certifications, things like that. But for young soldiers or people who are outside of the unit right now, you mentioned all these people who have these certs mm -hmm. and stuff. This is a huge asset for those people to come in and gather that knowledge to go back out to improve themselves. And so, um, you mentioned they bring back and share with you know the unit the, their specialty is that also true as far as them sharing it with the younger soldiers and and i guess teaching them up so they can go out and, and and 
progress their education, I guess, is where I'm headed with that. Absolutely. One <laughs> of the great training plans here, remember, we need to invest in our young people. Uh, we're a soldier first. So you have to meet all the standards. You have to height, weight, PT, weapons, qual, IMRX, medical. You have to be fit as a soldier first. Don't mistake me, team. We have to be a soldier first. But if beyond that, to develop your skills, we owe you a training. We have to grow you. Our young people come in, and once we validated that they have the level of maturity, that uh, they have that, show me that passion, drive, and motivation. And I'm speaking from my company. Um, we'll send them to the training. We'll give them those industry certifications. It's expensive, guys. It's really expensive. So we have to make sure that they're, one, capable, and they have the motivation to go uh, complete those certifications. Um, but the money's there. We have the training plan. We have the support of our leadership to send those uh, young people out there. One of the greatest advantages about being in the Guard is you get to take advantage of industry-type training, certifications, experience. Most job announcements say you must have five years of experience, these kind of certifications and all of that. That's great. If you're just starting out, how do you get that? Well, I joined the Guard because I didn't have that either, and I <laughs> wanted to go figure it out too. So we bring them in, we train them, we give them the certifications, and within one to two to three years, they're dangerous, and they look great on paper. And because our Guardsmen are the hires and fires in the community. They are the ones that make up these jobs and the ones asking to hire people. Who better than to go work with the people that do this for a living that also can help you? So, seamless plug to networking. <laughs> the Guard is the most excellent place to network. It's our community, guys. This is who we are. So if you come in and you show passion, drive, motivation, you uh, show that aptitude and you want to get in and get hot with stuff, then you earn it. We validate skill. That's the best interview you'll ever get. So I would encourage people, if you're interested, reach out. Look at the Guard as an option to kickstart a career, maybe enhance a career, maybe change a career. But the Guard has it all, and I, I don't understand um, how you could ever say no, ever. <laughs> well, um, I mean, we, we could legitimately get into the weeds on cyber mm. for ever. Hours. <laughs> I could talk hours about this. Eight hours. Um, <laughs> and I, I think it is something that we, we do talk hours about it. Um, and I, I think, you know, we look at having you revisit us mm -hmm. in the future and, and bring us, you know, some, some more tidbits. You know, we mentioned the geolocation and stuff like that, but there's obviously more stuff mm -hmm. for us to learn. Uh, cyber is always going to be evolving uh, faster than we can. Um, so, I, you know, I hope this is something where we, we can get you back in the future. A um, lot of information to absorb just in, in this one, but all good information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't want to leave you on something if you if you had something else you wanted to throw in there, but uh, excellent stuff for today so far. Uh, barring you having any kind of personal message you'd like to throw out for cyber, I would if, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of my my uh, hang up mic drop type uh, comments <laughs> is whatever you do, defend America. Whatever skill you have, whatever your passion, drive, and motivation is, use it to defend America. We need you. We love you. And this is the only way that America will stay free is if we stand up as citizens and take our role to defend America. Outstanding. We appreciate you coming by. Cool. Sergeant. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate your time. So that was some really good information from First Sergeant Chapman. Yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, he, he covered kind of a lot of stuff that we kind of talked about before we, we headed into his conversation. Mm -hmm. um, for those who were watching and probably even those who were listening, um, you might tell a difference in the audio quality. We actually pre-shot that before the equipment came in. Yes. Like we said earlier, <laughs> we've been super busy. So you might see a couple podcasts where it has the new and the old. So, yeah. So just, just bear with it. Don't, don't, don't think we pulled like a fast one on you or anything <laughs> like that. Um, unfortunately, or I don't know, that's maybe fortunately, um, I always have a hard time to determine whether it's going to be fortunate or unfortunate <laughs> uh, point of perspective, really. Um, but we've been busy enough that we've had to shoot ahead of where we're at. So mm -hmm. you, you will see some with the, the old equipment. But um, he made some really good points and, and kind of what I was going down with as far as, you know, protecting your family and um, stuff. And then we spoke with him, of course, shortly after the interview, and he, he would like to have more people come in uh, from the cyber unit Yes, and, and talk about very specific things. Yeah. Um, so hopefully here in the near future we can we can hook up with those folks and, mm -hmm. and, and get all that kind of stuff done. Um, now did you do you do any like cyber protection and stuff? I mean, do you ever really think about it? Honestly, I mean other than 
Because at work works one thing, but when I'm home, I don't really do much. I might be on my phone. Of course, you're going to press that button. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> you want to press, just go through all of them real quick and get it done and over with and out of your system? No, I think it's more meaningful if okay. I wait, hey, wait for until <laughs> certain moments. I feel like I feel like that's that's more important than, than oh. just. It's about the it's about the quality oh, okay. of the button push. Gotcha. Not necessarily the quantity of mm-hmm. button pushes. I mean that makes sense. So. Gotcha. So anyway, cyber awareness at home. <laughs> but yeah, I mean honestly, I. I really don't. I probably should. I don't have kids, so and I don't do a lot of. I do everything from my phone, really. So I probably I mean, your phone still. Needs no, to I know. Be like better. when I was in Jordan, obviously we had to turn off our geo tagging and all of that. Uh-huh. Um, and honestly, since my deployment a couple years ago, I forgot how to do all that because you, I don't think you don't think about that. You just you're. Uh, you're constantly going through your daily life and those are the last things on your mind in a sense. So I think having him come in October being cyber awareness month that maybe I need to start implementing the tips and tools that they give us. Yeah. See, I'm a, I fall to the extreme other side of the thing. I I fall to the conspiracy theorist side (laughs) of the cyber world. Um, And you're a tech guy though. You know a lot about that stuff and you're, you're doing a lot and uh, yeah. um, I'm I'm semi-tech. I oh, mean, there, okay. there, there's, there, there's people, I'm at the bottom rung. But you still to, know a lot more than I do. Yeah, but I, I fall to the realm as like, I, I don't put security stuff on my computer and mm-hmm. things like that because I think the people who are making security software are making the viruses. <laughs> um, that's complete I, opinion and, and yeah. neuroses, but I, 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 but I try to stay up on other ways, I guess, to protect my computer. And I, I do scrub my computer on a fairly regular basis. And mm-hmm. I have some trusted anti-malware softwares and stuff like that that I use. And I run individual times. I don't let it just stay on there and run constantly. Mm-hmm. So I'm one of those. One of those guys? I'm one of those guys. <laughs> one of those weirdos. And I don't think I have a right button on here for that, maybe. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that one. That one? That one. That one so. works. <laughs> So I think a lot of the issues um, with technology and why people don't think about that kind of stuff is because it's extra money. And when you buy computers, you're already buying, you're already spending all this money on the computer. Then you have to buy all this software and then to have to add another fee onto that. They're like, I don't really need it until their computer crashes or they get a virus. And then that costs more than just having the software already there. But I think that maybe that might be um, a reason why people don't dig deeper into it or they don't think it's that big of a deal because, one, they don't think it's going to happen to them, and, two, it's just an extra cost. Yeah. So, and, and, of course, the biggest biggest way is always preventative, and, and it's not so much the world anymore where people are running and sticking floppy disk in your, yeah. your computer. So really <laughs> where all this is coming from is the Internet. So, you mm-hmm. know generally stay into trusted sites and sites that you know and have the proper you know security stuff in place um, for those type of websites is is a good way to start preventative maintenance from from cyber issues it's when you get off track into the the weird unknown of the internet and you wind up picking up something and next Mm -hmm. thing you know you got big neon signs flashing (laughs) on your and you just ignore it because you're like, oh, it'll go away. It'll go away. <laughs> it's only it becoming it. stronger as it sits there. <laughs> it's morphing into something way worse. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, hopefully, like we said, we'll be able to get more folks from the cyber group in here. Yeah. And uh, they'll be able to educate us and enlighten us. Exactly. Well, I'm Sergeant Chelsea Baker. And I'm Specialist David Erskine. And we'll catch you in the next episode. <laughs>